right, Paul Mutes for number one with a goal of keeping that elbow still. No elbow movement in the early speeds. So really, it's really a lot of just kind of wrist. Wrist is kind of bending up like this a bit and coming back down. A little bit of arm, or I guess you could call it, what do you call it, forearm rotation, a little bit of that. But I'm not using my elbow at these slower speeds because you really don't have to. And I mean, you could, but doing that right now feels like using much more energy than we need to, which could cause you to, to get exhausted too early. So we want to wait until we're going really, 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 really fast before we even fiddle with the, uh, the elbow starting to move in there. So we want to minimize movement of the elbow as much as possible. Let it come in when it has to, but try to keep it out of the equation as much as you can as you get better at using more, say, wrist type movement. Because I believe if you can get better at that, then you will improve the smaller movements, which will allow for more precise playing. So, hope that makes sense. Here we go, 60. Let's zoom in on the picking hand a bit so you can see more about what's happening as I change speeds. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. If you can go faster than 180 for number one, definitely do it. Go as fast as you're able to within this whole time limit thing we got set up. And one last thing, uh, I don't. Rem I think I may have mentioned in the email signature there is there's that video for students to watch how to practice their stuff. Now that we have the repetitions going on, that video is much more applicable to what we are doing. Uh, so if you haven't watched it yet, please do. 60 for number two. One, two, three, four. Right now I got my pinky anchoring along with having 
this part of my hand sitting on the lower strings. So there's, there's quite a bit of contact with the guitar with my picking hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Ooh, bad note. One, two, one, two, three, four. With repetition. One, two, a one, two, three, four. picking hand as much as possible because the picking hand is currently the limiting factor in what you're trying to do we want to watch that limiting factor so literally watch your picking as much as you can so I know that you know learning the new stuff especially number two there you probably have to look at your left hand a little bit but as you get more comfortable with what the uh, fretting hand does watch that right hand as much as you can all right speaking of fretting hand here we go with number three 60. one two three four stuff so don't yeah that's right we did talk a bit about the entering chord name so because I don't know everything you do about guitar pro I might be repeating things you do know just want to make sure you you know everything we need to so we got the time signatures not time signatures the uh, key signatures Increasing in sharps, so going around the whole circle of fifths, and then we go to the flat keys, so we end up increasing flats as we go at the second half of this. And because those key signatures are set up, you should not see any sharp, flat, or natural symbols up here. Um, so yeah. So if you do end up seeing a sharp, flat, or natural symbol up here, then you know something's gone wrong. Uh, hitting the letter A on the keyboard, you hit the letter A, that brings up the chord diagram box, or chord name and box. Now me personally, I really don't like having a bunch of junk chords sitting up here, like chord diagrams and whatnot. So what I like to do is when this thing is up, I make sure display diagram is turned off. Because if it's not turned off, you'll end up with all kinds of stuff up here. And a lot of the theory stuff we'll end up doing will involve like labeling arpeggios. 
and then you'll just have like a C, D minor, and E minor, but just a single note thing sitting up at the top of the page, and it just looks like an ugly mess. But if you don't mind, well, there you go, that's fine. I, uh, yeah, so I like to have that chord, display chord diagram turned off. So as you're going through these, try and stay in the low position, or like near the open position as much as you can. And use bar chords and movable chord shapes when you have to. If, like, you're thinking of, like, oh, well, how can we do something like, for example, a, an open C minor chord? Well, that really doesn't happen. We typically just do a bar chord for C minor. So stuff like that, if you know the bar chord, go ahead and use that. And if you end up using a bar chord or a movable shape, when you could have done an open chord, I will point that out. Uh, so yeah, the hint with the B minor was, or the B minor, the B diminished was take your B minor shape, just the four strings, and alter that. And then that voicing that you end up with here, that'll be the same for starting on the low E string. So once you got that B diminished and the next, and the diminished starting on the low E string, you can, of course, use that minor shape and create that as well into the diminished. We're going to be using those two a lot for uh, quite a bit, quite a few things. Let's see. I think that about covers it. So yeah, no, no rush on getting the chords filled in. Just do what you can and continue polishing up those scale shapes. He just about had it yesterday, so I think one more week you'll have it. All right, and also, just practice the new stuff, the material from last week. We're, we're done with that, so we just focus on the new things, and we're good. All right, any questions, let me know. I will see you again next week.